Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. Before I get into this video, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video and that is the Borg from Genesis Federation. Well, basically they sponsored a ad campaign for their recruitment. So that is what you're hearing right now. Genesis Federation is one of the biggest corps in EVE Echoes at the moment. They're one of the most predominant uh, fighting forces and they're one of the largest corps in terms of industry and all other functions within that um, aspect. The next thing to note about Genesis Federation is they are made up of multiple corps and alliances. If you don't find a match with just the people within Borg, there are several others within the corporation who you could jump into. But the Borg are the majority of the players. They have um, structured programs for ships and um, they have structured rating programs, structured uh, a lot of their systems so that it would be optimal for gameplay for new players and for players who are already experts who want to join in and have a place. So they do have a place for just about anybody who is willing to join. Now at the moment Genesis Federation is growing and the reason why they are growing is they have taken on a lot more um, territory and they want to fill it up with more people. They don't want to just have their strong force in there, they want to share the wealth with the others in the game. So basically they're looking for more players in Genesis in the Borg uh, Corporation. So let's continue with this. Um, video so today's video is going to be on the capsule outpost and the corporation outpost an actual costing and a full breakdown on this particular format now one thing to note about this is the capsule outpost is one of the structures that we can build a current in the game it is slightly um it is slightly expensive to build and I'm about to go and give you a full build up uh, for this capsule outpost with weapons, mid slots and the full low slot equipped. So this is going to be a fully fitted capsule outpost. Now please note one thing on this here. The values for the prices are at optimal market prices, the maximum we've ever seen any price reach and that is where I'm going with these prices. That's because in a few weeks time sovereignty is going to drop and with the sovereign um, drop there's going to be a ton of people scattering through the markets buying up as much resources as they can in terms of PI and building up these ships. Some people will even build their corpse in high sec and move it up through safe passages into null sec. Now the reason for that is it's easier to get resources in high sec than it is to get in null sec. You have to require your corp to build it and that then makes quite a heavy impact on how much of resources uh, will be needed by each corp. And I have actually done a fair calculation on it. The corp outpost at maximum value of materials costs around 4 point... One moment, I do have a spreadsheet, let's see if it's open. No, it's not opening. Oh, it is opening. All right, so we're about to get into the spreadsheet, but let's just talk about exactly what happened when I was going through all this information. So first of all, one thing to note is there are over 11 materials required to actually build up a station completely. That's the corp outpost. Yeah, here we go. For this, let me just try and reduce it a bit. As you can see, here are all the required um, components. Reactive gas, industrial fiber, coolant, construction blocks, silicate glass, polymerids, noble gas, uh, super tan plastic, super tensile plastic, smart fab, nanites, and condensate. Those are the materials needed. So the first one that you have is a cap outpost. It requires uh, 1.1 million worth of reactive gas, 37,000 industrial fiber, 200,000 coolant, 300,000 construction blocks, 140,000 silicate glass, 140,000 polymerids, uh, 130,000 noble gas. Now, as you can see, the rest of the figures are, yeah, I'm not going to read every single figure. I just felt it was going to get a bit boring. But look below it. It's the corp outpost. And here are the values for 
what is in those um, fractions, each one. As you can see, it's almost double in reactive gas. It's almost 10 times as much in industrial fiber. It's way more in coolant. The figure is uh, exponential in comparison to construction blocks. Same with silicate glass, same with polymerids. And it keeps up this pattern for most of the materials. But let's look at the bottom because I also have something very special. This is the is costing to purchase these materials. As you can see, 500 million, and it doesn't really go very heavy in these simple um, materials. But when you look at it at the end, it will give you, wait, let me just, uh, 4 billion. So everything put together is just going to rack up at around 4 billion. That is for a corp outpost. Oh, no, sorry, not corp outpost, capsulier outpost. And as you can see, I label them once again, corp and um, caps, uh, capsulier. Now, the reason is I've taken those figures at the top, multiply them by the cost of the materials, and I have a final figure. So let's have a look at it. There is the corp outpost. It's already 12 billion. Uh, well, sorry, 1.2 billion for the first material. It's 2 billion for the second, 2 billion, 1.3, 1.9, that's almost 2, 2.1, 600 mil, 8 billion. And as you can see, prices are just skyrocketing as we reach the edge. You go into the next one, it's. 1.9 billion, three, you, you get the idea, it's quite heavy on costs. And all together, all the materials to build every single component, including the weapons, including uh, mid slots and low slot, will cost you 25 billion ISK. I'm, I might be making a slight read error. This it took me quite some time to make. Yeah, just near 26 billion actually, it's that close. So that is the expense of building one of these if you're just going to buy the materials off the market during Prime. And some corps are going to have to purchase them during Prime. So let's say, for example, a corp like Genesis Federation. Even with every single pilot right now in the official game, gathering every material possible for building stations, it's going to take them quite a while. It might take them three weeks to build one capsule outpost. And that's just to get the materials in. To actually build the outpost will take several weeks. And that's going to be a delay. You, you don't want such a massive delay. So they're going to have to invest in players similar to me who are 100% in the building skill and dump them with one item to build. Basically push out 100 uh, structure, not 100, um, 10 structure every week. So 10 structure, 10 structure, 10 structure. And another guy doing the next one, the arrays. And as you can see, it's the structure, the storage bay, the docking bay, the repair, the yellow is a bit hard to read, uh, repair, factory, reprocess, lab, mission, medical, and, and you get it, there's so many things that have to be built. And you're going to need to have a person with 100% in each one of these producing 10 at a time for you. So that at the end of a week, you have everything ready for you to go. And obviously, this means you're not going to have that advantage of going to your corp and uh, pulling it out of the hangar because those who are doing it off the hangar are definitely going to do larger amounts They most definitely are full industrial so they can do 10 items and it will take them one week But you need more than 10 items for a lot of these items in uh, production of the capsule uh, the, the the corporation outpost some of the items are in the 10s 15s 25s that's quite a heavy construction time. And even if they do dedicate just one week to it, they're still not going to be done. You need a person on each and every item until you have the perfect number for building your stations. And building your stations in NALSEC is going to be a good idea if you can get everything up. So if you can get, uh, let's see, how much of uh, titanium does it take? If you can get 4 billion titanium up to NALSEC, you're going to be fine. But let's say if you, if you had all of these materials, because it's not just one material, 4 billion titanium isn't going to be worth 4 billion. At the moment, it's worth 2. So that's 8 billion. 
if you're going to purchase it right now, it's going to cost you 8 billion. If you're going to purchase it in a month's time, it's going to cost you 20 billion. Are my figures right here? Sorry, no, I, I made a mistake. It's 395 million. Yeah. 395 million. Sorry, my, my big mistake on that one day, I actually misread it. So 395 million titanium. As you can see, small errors, these are big numbers, reading them off the small sheet. So that's exactly where you're going for building these. As you could see, I gave you an idea on the price, I gave you an idea on the materials. So where does your corp need to go in order to have this year completed? Well, they're going to need to really push out what they're building. They're going to have to really get everybody on the game. They're going to have everybody rolling out these structures. And to make it easier, they're going to have to purchase in NALSEC right now. Now, if you had to wait, let's say, a month, you run the risk of losing out on this massive um, saving. Right now, those figures that I gave are at peak. And right now, we're not at peak. We are almost half of peak at the moment. So if you're lucky and you go to the right station, you can get 4, bil uh, four billion um, tritanium for 4 billion ISK. That is the biggest saving you can ever have. It's a one to one instead of a one to five. So instead of you buying 4 billion for 10 outposts and it costs you, let's see, uh, 20 billion just to build your four outposts in titanium. If you spend it right now, it's gonna cost you 4 billion. And all those figures will be slightly lower. They'll be like 12, 12.5. And if you multiply it by 10 uh, for 10 of them, it's going to cost you somewhere near 125 billion. Yes, it is quite heavy and the corpse definitely can handle it provided they stop building useless doctrines. That's going to be another video that I'm going to release about uh, a lot of the corpse building doctrines that aren't really effective anymore. But here's something else to note. When it comes to building these stations, if you dedicate every single construction member of your corp to build these things out and you have 30 or 40 guys doing this for you, it may not be instantly in one week that it costs you 125 billion. The 125 billion might be across two or three months, not two or three months, about uh, across uh, four or five weeks, sorry, because I'm working out the first week is just producing the materials the construction pieces the second week is just producing mm -hmm. it's just producing the weapons and the modules for all your stations because you want that ready before the station is fully anchored then the week after is done in production of the stations and once all your stations are ready all your your uh what is the fuel that they generally use uh polymer polymoids uh all of that is ready all of that is in place it's ready to fuel up your station you have millions worth of uh, resources gathered up it's going to be a couple hundred thousand to keep your stations fully fueled I, I know that's quite expensive but let's say that you finally get there everything is up everything is running and you know what there you go you, you're at a point where you can actually have an effect on other players you have enough isk for other players to uh note what you are doing you have spread out the work between your corp things are a lot cheaper than they naturally would have been you're not getting charged super high high fees because you're not buying components off the market you're purchasing things at the right moment and the moments of drops you're going to have fully fitted highly dangerous corp stations ready to go and depending on what strategies you play i know one or two corps have actually started making diamond formations uh, with the corp stations and another one have done the floral pattern around the uh, gates and I've heard that it is very very effective I heard that if you actually drop in there with the fleet the firepower that is generated from just one of those stations activating is phenomenal and when all of them activate together they literally obliterate fleets in uh, frigates and cruisers so if anybody goes in with small fleets and you get caught at the gate if you have a crime timer on you or a podding 
timer and you try to run by accident or if you end up decloaking by the gate because someone dropped a box you literally finished if you have a big ship and you try to run through you generally get caught by the disruptors and you get uh, blasted away by six stations so quite a heavy impact for those who don't understand the utility of these stations so if you're going to build heavy uh, corp uh, outposts you're going to need some type of defense for those sectors and that's going so, and that's going to be the capsule outposts if you can get them in the right formation players who are on um, on massive numbers of time because I know there is a problem where the corp outposts don't defend themselves when you're offline so yeah it, it might be a good idea to have five or six players um, who are permanently online who leave their characters online overnight uh, those type of players to just leave their uh, leave their capsules or leave one of their ships in there and they go offline in their station they have it fully active the moment anybody tries to invade their sector someone tries to move an army through it's just going to black them and it's just going to destroy them and the only way to actually counter that is to use high-end ships you need a, a battleship guardian so that's going to be the nightmare you're going to need your battle cruisers as your as your attack force so that they can actually withstand the fire because a battle cruiser can take two shots from a station and if you count that out with um, six stations that's a one hit destruction to them without the shield guardian with the shield guardian with a 60 percent increase in defense everything being added to them they might be able to tank it they might be able to survive depending on how tanky you make your ship on the other hand you could run a full battleship fleet obviously it's going to be faction battleship and they will make it through and they will have that impact that you want to get to to the next gate but you're going to have to destroy all six stations in order to have a beachhead in and out of the sector because if you don't destroy all six you're going to have to wait at the gate while you are being attacked with the crime timer on you and that is really going to slow it down plus you're going to be warp disrupted and you don't know whether they're going to throw an interdiction sphere so all of this is something to take into consideration when taking on corp outposts and you have to keep this in mind for your build for the corp outpost and if you work that out with the proper costing that's going to go in you're going to spend an equal amount on corp outposts for defense as you are going to spend uh, sorry on capsule outposts to defend your sectors as you are going to spend on corp outposts to whole sectors so if you put 125 mil that means as I, as you saw the price relation it's about uh, five times value you're going to have five corp outposts at minimum in that sector at maximum you're going to have something like 32 and that is purely to defend your gates if you have a sector with more than two gates it's going to need more than uh more than that number of stations and the bigger your formation the bigger the firepower now when i say diamond format i mean that they've taken the gate and they placed one station at each of the optimal points to make a diamond around the gate that means you have one on the exit one on the entrance uh, and then one at the top one at the bottom one to the left one to the right with this type of a formation you actually have a four piece diamond and if you perfectly um, if you have the perfect spacing on them and you align your your deployment system correctly you can have a perfect diamond and when i say a perfect diamond i mean 30 k's apart in each um, aspect so that everything that comes in is webbed and uh, disrupted at least more than once so if you are coming in you're definitely going to get caught if you aren't leaving the gate immediately if you do have the odd satisfaction of destroying a uh, a pod or anything else in the sector you have to wait in the sector before you get through the gate because if you jump on the gate with that many uh, defenses you're going to take quite a heavy hit now besides the gate formation of six there are formations of eight sixteen and thirty two they are floral defense patterns i call them floral defense patterns because you organize them like flowers and the reason why you organize them like flowers is you have to place them in the right format six stations gathered right together on each other 
to form one part of your floral. That's six stations, six stations, six stations. That gets you up to 36. And that there on its own generates so much of firepower on the gate that if someone is foolish enough to uh, try and jump in an entire fleet, they have to make sure that they aren't dropping at the gate. They have to be moving straight from the gate to a planet, from the gate to another location. And there are so many defense formations when it comes to stations that you can use. One of the ways to do this is just overload stations, but the cost is quite heavy. It's about an average of about 300 million to keep um, a station fully fueled for a month. 300 million. That's one storyline mission per station. And that was at the 3000 mark for, polymer, um, for the power source. And right now it has gone three times higher. So that there is now almost a billion to keep each one powered. So if you're going to go for a heavy format like this, it's going to cost you billions to keep the, the sectors powered. It's going to cost you billions to destroy enemies. And it's going to make you a lot safer. So for those who don't have gate guns and so forth, and if they don't launch gate guns with the Sovereign Pact, this is going to be a good idea because running this type of a defense will mean that you don't have to run fleets const constantly. Um, attacks and defenses are just uh, staged at those uh, posts and you can trap enemies within your territory. And with the Sovereign um, update, if I am correct, they can't dock at um, NPC stations which are owned by another territory which is read to them. So they can't dock at your stations. They have to keep running around in the sectors exposing themselves to danger. And if you have too many of these floral patterns, too many stations set, uh, situated throughout your sector, you literally have no reason to run defense forces. When someone attacks you, you just come out with a small force in your sector. If they run to a gate, they finished. And you just have to hunt them at the planets or hunt them in the belts, or hunt them in the anomalies, and it's a quick and easy. Unless they're coming in in something like an Atron, in which case they aren't really all that uh, deadly. The only thing they can take on is Venture 3s, and that's provided the Venture 3 pilot doesn't have a drone on, because if he does have a drone on, they're going to have a tough time taking that out. So those are the options for you coming up with Sovereignty. Now, I know that I like to preach about the defense by station, and it is something that I generally have never ever tried out myself. Uh, someone was bragging about the fact that they 16 up a station um, in a dead end. So basically 16 stations on a gate in a dead end. If you try to get into that sector and try to fight them, you have to fight them and wander around on each of the planets before you can leave. They have about 150 people in the sector. And if you actually are, unlucky enough to jump in on one of their mining fleets you're going to experience about 50 to 60 pilots worth of drones so that's about 50 times 2 that's 100 drones hitting you at once and if you're in anything that is slow bulky doesn't warp away quick enough you're going to get caught on the gate and if they drop a interceptor bubble on the gate you're finished so Atron interceptors, small interceptor vessels are the only vessels that really can get into their sector. They're not really so worried about them because they aren't that powerful and they can instantly get anybody to defend them. They use a battle um, retriever formation. So in other words, the retriever with the disruptor and uh, mid slots to stop enemies from running away. So that's the whole idea. They have heavy tank on retrievers and they have massive amounts of defensive formation ready to go. So those are everything that you need to know about those sectors. Now, this doesn't belong to Genesis, the Genesis, the floral pattern or the defense gate with 16. That belongs to another corp. I'm not going to expose who they are because there's definitely going to be the crazy guy who's going to go and destroy their stations. There is a way to destroy their stations. There is a way through that defense but I'm not going to go into it. I'm not going to get into it as yet. So with all of this said, you have to understand that formations and fleets are now going to have to get a little bit stronger. People are going to be able to deploy gate guns as, uh, as a possibility. Gate guns plus a uh, capsular outpost defense formation, that's going to be a really heavy thing for you to get through. Uh, gates can only hold two guns if I am correct. So that's two guns plus there's going to be capsular outpost plus there's going to be um, maybe an interdictor interdicting the gate. 
there's going to be heavy, heavy costs. If you're going to run into a sector, guns blazing, there's a strong possibility you're going to get taken down. And that's going to be an easy 80 to 90 billion defense per gate, or maybe even more, maybe 100, 200 billion. All depends on when you're building the stations. Right now, you can build the stations for about 2.5 per piece. You could even build it for a cheaper uh, fee at 1.2 to 1.5 bill if you know which markets to go to and which prices to place buy orders for. So yes, with the current rise in the planetary materials, it isn't such a good idea to just go rushing around and purchasing them. You need to put a buy order and purchase at the right figure because players are being greedy. They're trying to maximize what they can pull out of the market. It's generally what players do. Greed is part of the game. It's a good format of play. And you need to be one of those who can overcome greed to get what you want. So thank you all for watching. Have a good day.